Hi everyone, uh, my name is Juan Pablo. Uh, this talk is about CSS Grid and a uh, show of hands, uh, who's heard of CSS Grid? Awesome, we're making a lot of progress. Who's written some CSS Grid code? Yeah, good, good, good. Um, all right, so I'd like to start with a question. Uh, what do these three things have in common? Uh, an artist, a movie, a sports player. A hint, they were born in 1988, well, the movie was made in 1988, which means all of these are older than the web. Um, every time I think of this, it makes me feel this way. Um, we're old. And this is a thought that I'd like to start this talk with, like remembering how young this medium is. Uh, how, right, how right now is the perfect time to jump in and learn about CSS grid. So um, I'm going to split this talk into three sections, like why CSS grid, uh, how to use CSS grid, and when to use it. Um, so let's go with why. Let's take a quick trip back to the beginning. Uh, in 1989, Tim Berners-Lee, sorry, Sir Timothy John Berners-Lee invents the web. Uh, this is the first website, it's published in 91, I think, it's still, it's still up. And one thing to notice is that there's no layout, right? Uh, left to right, it just goes all the way to the end, jumps to the next line, unless you want a break. There was no layout in the web back then. Um, 1995, tables come to the web, and we're excited, we're hungry for layout. So we hacked those things and we sliced the images like there was no tomorrow and and we did all of these cool things with HTML. Um, if any of you works with HTML newsletters, Outlook still thinks they're in 1995. <laughs> then uh, it's also worth noting that in 95 JavaScript came around. Why? Um, Matt Mullenweg in the past to work on has mentioned that JavaScript is the next thing to learn, and I agree, it is true, it's, it's super important, and JavaScript is pretty amazing, but JavaScript is not built for layouts, it's not the solution that we need. And you know, those pop-ups, right? Wait, huh? Oh, one second. All right. Don't use it for layout, please, easy on the pop-ups. Um, 1996, Flash comes around, and once again we get excited, right? We feel like uh, Tom Cruise dragging things around the layout and modifying our timelines, and, and it was pretty awesome, and we got to do some great things, but Flash had its major issues. It was also not the solution we were looking for, because not native to browsers, a closed ecosystem, you have to purchase your software to build things, and then SEL, right? You have to put flash videos on the web, uh, how do you get to target content inside of that video? Um, eventually, this guy came around and pretty much killed it with the iPhone. So 1998, CSS lands, right? It shows up less than two decades ago, uh, and it revolutionizes the way we build things, right? The idea of managing your layout, your colors, your fonts, all from one file, you know, you give birth to a new, a new, um, a new wave of websites. And this pretty much stayed the same for quite a few years. And then this happened, right? At some point, we cut ourselves with uh, hundreds of different device sizes, and then this happened too. <laughs> and this, oh, that's a tiny phone. Um, so, we were trying to build websites the same way, and you know, we we're trying to target X device and Y device, and we we're trying to do some browser sniffing to see what device it was, and and it was taking it an intense amount of time, and it, we were we were not being successful in reaching every single device out there. So this brilliant man um, named Ethan Marquet, he came around and he said, you know, we should look for opportunities to be just a little lazy. Like, why don't we let the browser do the math? Why don't we start making responsive stuff? You know, uh, working with percentages, working with the web, with the browser. And once again, you know, it changed, it shifted the way we look at things, it looked, the way we looked at the web, and, and it went through another transformation. But the problem is, we took the lazy part too far, right? We started making the same website. Because uh, we got over, overwhelmed by the amount of devices, right? When you don't want to start from scratch, you go and you grab something that's 
out there, right? You, you can't just target every single device. So we started treating it more or less like a finished medium. It goes on and on and on. And, and some of these websites are beautiful, but every single website can't be the same because every single website uh, does not solve the same problem for the client. So this is where we stop again and we, say, and we say, you know, the web is only 20 years old and we've had to design websites conforming to its limitations. Um, print is, what, hundreds of years old. Uh, film is, is going well over 100. Uh, music, you know, if you count the Lord of the Rings, music's been around forever. Um, so what do we do? We build frameworks and plugins and boilerplates, and, and these are pretty awesome, but we use them we use them sometimes just because we have to. We want to conceal some of these limitations. And this is where CSS Grid comes in. CSS Grid does not hide these limitations. CSS Grid gets rid of them. Um, in the words of uh, Jen Simmons, you know, this new CSS revolutionizes web page layout. Um, yeah. So, you're right now you're thinking, okay, okay, JP, we get it. CSS Grid is great, right? It's gonna change everything. Um, what I wanna know is how. Okay, so how can I use this magical CSS grid that I, um, that I speak of? So quick note, uh, for the following demos, uh, they're all in Firefox Developer. Uh, you can download it, it's pretty amazing. Uh, once, once you get going with the little the waffle icon, uh, you'll fall in love with it. Uh, it's, it's, it's by far the best, the best. It has the best grid tools out there. Uh, also for these demos, you'll notice that uh, I'll only use one container and six little containers inside, each one with a color, just to, to help us see what's going on. That's all the HTML that we'll use, that's all the CSS that we'll use, besides grid, uh, to make some <laughs> magical things. So here we go. So what's going on here? So this is our first layout. So I did four lines of CSS and make this. So how did I make it? First you do display grid, right? Display grid is the one that tells us, tells the browser, hey, use this specification. Then I told it, hey, make me some columns, grid template columns. Make me one FR, five FR, and three FR. What is FR, right? It's, FR is a fraction. So this is pretty awesome. It's a new concept, right? We all know fractions. We all know one third and two thirds. It's three thirds. It's one. We all know one fifth. You know, we all know how to add and subtract. But it, this is the best part of this is that we have the browser do the math for us. So I just told it, I just want three columns. One is one FR, five FR, three FR. You do the math. So what the browser does is this, right? It always keeps the fractions. It always knows it's one fifth and a third of. Five nines, three nines, and one ninth, because they all add up to nine. The next one is grid template rows. So for the first time ever, we can do rows. We can do two-dimensional layouts. We can do vertical and horizontal. This has never been possible before, which means, like in this one, I did the same. I just told them, hey, grid, give me four rows. Give me one that's 200 pixels, one that's 100, one that's 40, one that's 120. And if you notice, they're there. They don't have any content, but they're there. You know, we're so used to the web just creeping up and we're trying to push it down and we're trying to pat it down and margin up. Now we can just have white space, we can leave it there, we can do some amazing stuff where we don't really have to hack anything or float anything or, or do any of these weird padding, margin hacks. And then the last one is the grid gap, which basically is our gut. We don't have to guess, like, okay, so I have three columns, so it's 33.3% and then my padding will be one point, no way. You know, none of that. Uh, the browser will guess it for us, and with these four lines of code, that we can make this. Now, sample number two. So things change slightly, right? So you have display grid still. Then you notice I have still three columns. One, one is three FR, one is 100 pixels, one is FR. This is the cool thing about grid. You can combine units. So you have FR, you can have pixels, you can have percentages, you can have Whatever it is that whatever unit that CSS supports, and the browser will just figure it out for you. So in the example, for example, you have a client, right? And the client says, you know what? I need a fixed block space, you know, where I can place my ad, which is gonna make me lots of money, which is this one, right? And then maybe give me another one on the footer, because you know, twice the ads, twice the money, right? That's how it works. So he puts it here, so here and here. 
So you notice that that one is 100 pixels. So if I play the animation, the blue one does does not shrink. The one that's three far and the one's one far, one far, sorry, will try to figure out what's left, and then it'll just by itself um, rearrange. The, the row is still the same, I just ask for three ones, one of them is 15 VH, you know, I just change the unit and it's still, you know, it figures out for me what, what it needs. Now, another thing that's here that you notice is a span, right? So, this is a grid. Working with a grid is the same as working on a grid on a paper, right? You have your cells, you have your tracks. So you can just, you want to span two cells, you just say, hey, uh, for my container name two, the blue one, why don't you just span two rows? And it just spans. And then for the container that's on, uh, that I gave the class six, why don't you just span three rows? And it just spans three rows, the rest of the other ones just fall naturally. Because CSS grid has this advantage that it can be implicit or explicit, you know? Uh, implicit, it just falls down naturally, and you can be as explicit as you want, and you can drop things whatever you want. Now, you build the other website, you know, your plane is happy, busy in time, um, and then you have another friend. This friend is an artist. And your friend wants a simple gallery. Now, display grid still, right? It just knows, the browser knows that it's a grid. Then, I did the same, columns. But instead of writing, I want five columns, one is 1FR, 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 and then one 12 rows, one is 10 BW, 10 BW, I just use the repeat, you know, the specification repeat, which basically just tells the browser, why don't you just repeat this five times, and why don't you just repeat this 12 times. Now, that doesn't work. And it's responsive, it knows, it knows, uh, how to shrink and expand, and it'll do everything for you. You'll do all the calculations. You got her, your grid got, I put 1M, I can put whatever, and it'll, it'll respect it. Uh, but I said your client, I said your friend is an artist, right? So your friend turns back and gives you this, you know? Because the other one was boring. If you notice one thing, this, the container, from this, the container, nothing changes, nothing at all. It's the same exact grid. We already set our grid. We don't need to set anything else. What we do is we use the implicit parts of grid. We said since this is a grid, the same way that you'll number it on a piece of paper, uh, you have your line one, line two, line three, line four, line five, line six. It starts from one left to right, and it starts from one top to bottom. Uh, grid respects left to right and right to left, right in nodes. So if you're using you know, grid for another language, you can actually flip it around. But not, but you know, here we'll do left to right and top to bottom. Uh, so one, which is my red circle, I just told it, hey, why don't you go from column two to four? I just two to four, and why don't you go from row one to three? And why don't you just go two go from three to five? And two to what? Yeah, two to five, two to six. So a lot of awesome things are happening here, right? Things are overlapping. Things are being placed without position absolute. Uh, things you can be explicitly explicitly placed. You have a lot of white space that you don't really need to set set anything for it. Um, this is this is the so this one one of the issues that you you might run with it is when you play it right and you make it smaller. Let's say you have some images, and it gets smaller. Sometimes your images get too small, right? Like you don't want that. So how do you usually fix it? You have media queries. Uh, but with CSS grid, you don't need media queries. You can build because uh, CSS grid was built with responsive design in mind. Uh, so what's happening right here? CSS grid has a new spec also that says uh, min max and auto feed. So auto feed basically just tells that um, it says Fit the container with as many as you can, and min-max tells it minimum and maximum. Please, I don't want my container to be smaller than 120 pixels, and I don't want it to be bigger than the rest. So what happens is, without media queries, the browser will do this. The containers are never, never smaller than 120 pixels, and they're never bigger than the other, the other two or three or four or five. So this is done with zero media queries, you can just with this couple of lines of code, and you can almost guarantee that your gallery will work on every single device. 
but not every single device I can do. On as many devices. Uh, so when? When can we use CSS Quick? So by now you're probably saying, okay, JP, I'm sold. When can I pre-order this, this CSS Quick thing? Uh, so this is four months ago. Uh, we were at 0.32%, it's pretty bad by any standard. Uh, Microsoft, they, believe it or not, they're the ones that came out with this specification back in the day. Uh, it's still baked into those browsers, it's an older spec, it works, doesn't work well, they still have, you need to do some vendor prefixes, so we'll count them as not working as the samples that I showed are working. So we'll, we'll stick to 0.32%, right? Uh, so that was four months ago, March 8th. Then three weeks later, boom, it landed. It landed in Firefox, it landed in Chrome, it landed in Safari, it landed in Opera, it landed in iOS, it landed in Chrome and Chrome Android, and we were at 26%. Now, it's important to know that this has never happened before on any release uh, for a feature for a browser. How did this happen? Uh, they worked, I think, 2012 is when, uh, what's her name, Rachel Andrew says she started working on this, so, but they all worked behind flags, you know, they worked behind the scenes and they were working and working on it, which was very different from Flexbox. If you ever got to work with it, they released it. And then they were iterating, and they were they were changing stuff, and Flexbox kept changing on live websites. So people kind of just waited until it was ready, and then they were like, "Okay, I'll use it now." No, grid, it just released. It got released as a finished product. So this was just three weeks after. Um, oh yeah, three weeks after it, there was nothing. It was just there, right? And uh, Jen Simmons, she's one of the biggest advocates for like exploring layouts for CSS Grid. She's amazing, a scholar. Uh, she wrote, you know, on Twitter, she wrote three weeks ago Firefox, two weeks ago Chrome, last week Opera, today Safari. Yes, CSS Grid is here, right? And of course, this is Twitter, so we got a, ah, and you were on Edge. Come on, Edge, make it happen. What about Edge? How about Edge? Is Edge on its way? Um, Yes, it is. So, this is yesterday. Uh, the new version of Edge will have it. Right now we're at 65 or 64%. So, and you notice all of the newer browsers, they have it. So CSS Grid and CSS is here to, to stay. Um, I think they call it, Edge is calling it, uh, it's a preview. So if you want to have CSS Grid come to Edge faster, <laughs> go to the forums on, on on Microsoft, both for it, and um, I'll eventually be here, but if, if, if you want to help actively get, get it here faster, uh, just go and go. Uh, uh, the long story short, yes, you can actually just start using CSS Grid right now, right? The support is there, it's overwhelming. Um, if you want to start doing some tests with new websites and try some new features, this is a great, a great way to do it. Uh, if you use media queries, uh, support works exactly the same way. So you will write your code, right? Oh, I'm doing Spanish. Container. No, wait. Oh, container is English, right? Container is Spanish. Container. <laughs> and we just write a media query, a query, a supports query that says, hey, browser, if you support grid, then use this code. Don't use this one. And it'll respect that. And supports is it's pretty overwhelmed, the support that uh, supports it's supported and a lot of Browsers. Oh. So we're going to learn more. Uh, Jen Simmons, as I mentioned, Rachel Andrew. Uh, Jen Simmons has a website called labs.jensimmons.com where she explores a lot of layouts. It's pretty amazing. Uh, she does some fantastic things. Uh, Rachel Andrew, she worked on the spec. As I mentioned, she has a workshop called the CSS Workshop, which is the CSS if you want to learn CSS thoroughly. You know, I used to call myself a CSS ninja, then I took this and I was embarrassed. Uh, She's, it's pretty amazing, the workshop that she offers. And then uh, just visit the, CA, the grid spec. Uh, the Mozilla Developer Network has pretty awesome tools, and there's, there's a couple here. Um, it's pretty much all over the web right now. So if you just do a quick search, uh, search for, for uh, Rachel or Jen, you'll come across a ton of pretty awesome uh, tools and, and new things coming up, because it's, it's so new that there are new things coming up week after week after week. Uh, and that's it. So that's me. Uh, 
Thank you so much. You have any questions? All right, back. Go back first. So, so um, is this being a, is this an HTML5? Is it is it embraced with HTML5? But the three consortium is it like that's all the back part? It's all set now, and you can, is that what that implies? That's my first mm -hmm. question. Yeah. Second question is is this uh, replacing Flex, or can Flex still be used inside the context of CSS Grid? The second question. Sorry, read the second one? What is it? Uh, can Flex be still used? Uh -huh. This isn't replacing Flex, mm -hmm. or is Flex used com com compatible with, you know, in conjunction with? Mm -hmm. um, those, that's my second question. Okay. Yeah, so for the first question, uh, HTML5 you mentioned, well, this is this is all CSS, and it is baked into the browsers, which means it just works, right? Um, one of the greatest things about CSS is that if it works, it works. If it doesn't, it ignores it. Sometimes it's frustrating, but it's it's better than getting a blank page for an error. So if it's if it's baked into the browser, if it's gets if it's supported, it'll work. And um, that's one of the great things about about Grid that it's 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 it works within the structure, right? It was content. I mean, it works structure first, layout first, and then out. Most of the other layout features work content first, and then you try to adapt the layout to it. Uh, and then Flexbox and CSS. Yes, you can use them together. There's some differences, right? I mean, they're not they're not competing. They actually share a couple of of of, um, of features. Uh, I think the what is it? Justify content, align items. I think they work on both. Basically, they're not competitors. The only the main difference is that if you think of Flexbox, Flexbox is one dimensional, right? It only works like on rows. Uh, CSS Grid works on. On, on two dimensions, you can have rows and columns. That's that's the bigger feature. You can still use Flexbox. You can use a, a grid container with a Flexbox, you know, inside. And you wanted to use something like a gallery, I guess, something that's stuff like this. I mean, I don't see why now you shouldn't use Flexbox. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. Um, what are you, uh, what are so what would you say that um, the fallback best practices are going to be for uh, supporting um, IE11 and below? Yeah, that's, that's, that's a great conversation going on right now, and I'm just following along. Um, it's a tough choice. I mean, we, we have to get out of the mindset that websites have to look the same on every browser, because it's just not going to happen. So. With that said, you can actually just try to have a good version on your browser, on I mean, of, of your website on that browser. Uh, that that will be my, my, my best advice. Uh, yeah, like for example, I work with a lot of newsletters sometimes, and you know, Outlook. It's it's just I have to support it because the person that approves the <laughs> the, the, the design. That's yes. Yes. Yes, correct. So, yeah, my advice is like accessibility is super important. So just make sure they get a good experience, and then you can, you know, add the bells and whistles and the nicer stuff and, and better experience on the newer ones. Yeah, it's it's super hard to try to target every single device, but I will say, do try that they have to try to have them have a good experience and and. Even if, and then let them know that it, it's just the nature of the web and things won't look the same on every single browser, that it's, it's impossible. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. I noticed one of the code measurements, it was for a row and it was the number and VH. What is VH? So VH. VH. Whatever. Vertical height, I assume? Exactly. So VH and VW are pretty awesome because they basically, so you have pixels, right? Pixels are very specific. Then you have percentages, which percentages depend on the parent, 100%, 50%, 30% of the parent. VH and VW will tell you the V stands for viewport. So you will tell the container, make me X percentage of the viewport. So I want to be 60 VW, is so I want to be 60% the size, the width of the viewport, or whatever screen I have. And VH is the same. VH is pretty awesome because it solves a lot of problems with height. Because if you just sell a website like I want it to be 100 VH, it will be 100% of the viewport. Yeah. 
which is slightly, it's slightly different from height, because height depends on the parent, and, and, and V, H, and VW depend on the, the viewport, the screen that you're looking at. Mm -hmm. Um, do you think that this is very quickly going to be like, like, uh, like uh, the, how fast do you think the, uh, the adoption rate of CSS grid is going to be with respect to, uh, like, current, current, like, uh, bootstrap mm -hmm. type, um, frameworks, you know, the ones that are based on, like, the, the traditional floating 12 column system? It's a tough question. Uh, well, I have some. I, I mean, I've read of like, the New York Times already using Grid on some things. You know, big big companies are already embracing it. Uh, I mean, Bootstrap is it's, it's awesome for some projects. It solves a lot of problems, but it comes with a lot of baggage, right? If you want a small little project, you have to get the big dinosaur that comes with it. Uh, so, I'm I'm I mean, one of the things I can guess is someone just makes a little. To, to start using, you know, to, to uh, implement grid in a, in a nice, simple way, and then you could, you know, you could get little features and little improvements. Yeah, it's tough. It's tough because it's 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 just a mindset shift, you know. Like I could have gone on and just show you the samples, but the reason why I wanted to tell you why is also because you know the web is young, and we tend to treat it as a finished medium, and, and sometimes the loudest voices on Twitter or Facebook are the ones that tell you like, this is the way it's done, this is the way it should be, you know, and you have the Googles and the Facebooks that tend to like, drive the conversation, and yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's not a finished medium, it's, we're getting started, so, yeah. If you want to write something, oh, pretty awesome. <laughs> good, good thing.